You ever crack open a book and it's like less about the story, more like, whoa, life manual. That's illusions for me. Mm, yeah. So today we're uh, diving deep into Richard Back's illusions, the adventures of a reluctant messiah. Okay. Think like philosophy, but you're, you know, cruising at 10,000 feet. Right, right. Spirituality with... Uh, with a side of turbulence. I like that. We've got excerpts locked and loaded, so buckle up, folks. <laughs> yeah. We're going to explore where reality gets fuzzy. And, and what's so cool is how Back uses it, like the whole flying thing, right? Oh, As yeah. this metaphor for like s smashing through the limits you think you have. It's like, what if, what if everything you thought was impossible just wasn't? Right, right, exactly. So, okay, imagine you're Richard, right? Pilot, making a living, taking folks up in your uh, trusty biplane. Okay. Life's good, yeah. Yeah. But there's this like itch, this feeling of there's got to be more. Yeah, yeah. Then bam, Hayfield, middle of nowhere, you meet Donald Shimoda. Okay. Not your average yeah. dude. Not your average encounter, no. Shimoda's this pilot, but there's something more, like yeah. almost mystical. And he becomes Richard's guide down this rabbit hole of like how we see the world. Okay. And the first sign that this guy's not just some barnstormer, yeah. his plane. A vintage travel air biplane, but pristine. No way. Spotless. After weeks, you're saying of barnstorming. Weeks. A plane like that should be like dust and wear and tear, but no. Perfect. This box waving a giant like neon sign, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, wake up. What you think is real could be totally off. It's like when you find an avocado at the store yeah. and it's like perfectly ripe, makes you suspicious. Like too perfect. Exactly. And yeah. that that suspicion, that questioning, that's what illusions is all about. In fact, Shimoda, he, he just comes out and says it like super casually. Oh, you mean his whole uh, this world yeah. and everything in it. Illusions, Richard, illusions bit. Yes, like it's nothing. While he's, you know, tinkering with his impossibly clean plane. Right, right. Just drops that bomb. And with that, boom, he kicks off Richard's. And kind of our own journey, too. Of questioning everything. What if, and this is a big what if, what if we're holding ourselves back by clinging to this this one view of what's real? And if that wasn't enough to wrap your head around, Richard finds this little book tucked away in Shimoda's plane, the Messiah's Handbook. This handbook full of these, these nuggets of wisdom that just turn everything upside down. And we're not talking like self-help cliches. This is, this is deep stuff. Insights into like the fabric of reality itself. Okay. Okay. So give me the good stuff. What, what are some of these Messiah's handbook gems that really like jumped out at you? Oh, there's one. It kind of hits you right between the eyes. What's going on around you, it says, is not reality. Whoa. Okay, hold on. I got to recalibrate my reality sensors. That's like saying, "What well, the world's a stage, but we're writing the play." Yeah, that's it. The handbook. It's saying our perception. It shapes everything. Like, what if there's like way more to life than what we, you know, see on the surface? More than what we've just accepted as like the truth, capital T. Okay, so then how do we tap into that more? Like, does this handbook have this secret code to? I don't know, rewriting our own personal narratives. It does. It talks about learning, doing, teaching, not just sitting there soaking up info, but actually getting your hands dirty, messing up, trying again. And then yeah. you share those experiences. Yeah. It helps others learn, helps them grow. It's like paying it forward. Okay. So it's this constant cycle, right? Yeah. Expanding how you see reality, but not by someone telling you what's what, by actually yeah. being in the world, being present. You got it. And, and here's the kicker. Ready for this? This handbook. No page numbers. No page numbers. Okay, that's a that's a choice. Like, what's the deal with that? Some kind of mystical thing. It's about how we're always, always given what we need. Right when we need it. Like, each time you open it, boom, the perfect lesson finds you. Okay, that's both kind of cool and kind of spooky. <laughs> like, is the universe peeking at my to-do list and handing me a cosmic post-it note? Maybe. But think about it. What if you kept getting the same lesson over and over? Oh, man, don't even... That's like the universe is saying, hello, are you getting this? Right. It's about choice. Remember, the handbook's big on that. We get to choose our experiences. Maybe that lesson keeps showing up because there's something you're not quite ready to deal with. Oh, I feel that. It's like when the universe keeps trying to teach you something, but you're not getting it. So it just keeps like dropping the same metaphorical blunt on your head. Until you either get the message or you get a serious case of spiritual whiplash. But it's about noticing those patterns, those mm. repeating lessons, and asking, what am I supposed to learn from this? And that loops back to this huge idea in illusions, mm. that we're not just along for the ride. We are creating our own reality every single day. Yes. 
And this idea of choice. Oh, man. It goes to some really wild places. Like, Shimoda, he compares life to a movie. Oh, right, right. The whole we're picking our roles, our genres thing. That really stuck with me. But it also makes you think, like, what if you didn't know you had a choice in the first place? What if you always thought, okay, this is my life rom-com end of story, but really you're meant for, like, a sci-fi epic. It's all about waking up. Illusions. It's like a giant alarm clock going off saying, look around. Are you living the life you actually want or are you just going through the motions? It's like we've been handed the keys to an amazing sports car, but most of us are content to just sit in the driver's seat admi admiring the upholstery. Illusions is telling us to put the car in gear and hit the gas. Exactly. And it's never too late to grab the wheel, to test out different routes, see where they lead. It reminds me of that quote, you know, life's not about finding yourself. It's about creating yourself. But in this case, it's more like life's about directing yourself. Love that. And speaking of directing, things get pretty wild when Shimoda starts doing things that, well, some folks might call miracles. So we've got Shimoda, right? This total enigma of a pilot, like casually breaking the laws of physics, mm -hmm. landing his plane in a space the size of a postage stamp. Mm -hmm. It's like, what? But then he just shrugs and says, not miracles, just understanding. And that's where it goes from mind-blowing to mind-bending. He's not out to impress anybody, right? It's more like he's saying, hey, what you think is possible might be holding you back. Okay, so how do we upgrade our, like, internal software? Asking for a friend who may or may not have walked into a wall after reading this book the first time. Well, the handbook talks about this thing, personal magnetism, like attracts, like okay. what you focus on, you draw to yourself. Okay, I get that, but it also feels like, whoa, high stakes. What if I'm like accidentally attracting negativity because I had a bad burrito for lunch and now the universe thinks that's my vibe? That's where intention comes in. Remember that bit about the blue feather? Shimoda gives Richard this challenge attract a blue feather just by thinking about it. Right, right. And it highlights this idea, even if you don't see it, even if it's not instant, your thoughts, they have power. They ripple out. So it's not just wishing for stuff. It's more like training your mind to like manifest what you want. Exactly. And it takes practice, right? Uh -huh. Doubt, fear, those are powerful too. But the more you focus on what you do want, the stronger that pull gets. Like become a magnet for awesome instead mm. of you know, attracting cosmic garbage. But even with all this talk about, like, free will, creating your own reality, there's this, I don't know, this undercurrent of loneliness and illusions. Like, Richard even asks straight up, don't you get lonely? And Shimoda's answer, so important. He doesn't shy away from it. He's like, yeah, sometimes when it serves a purpose. But he also talks about this deep connection we all have to something bigger, like real loneliness. It's not about being alone. It's about feeling separate from that. So it's about finding that connection, that belonging inside yourself first. Deep stuff. Yeah. But okay, buckle up, folks, because the story takes a turn. Enter the vampire. And, full disclosure, this part. Yeah, keep me up at night. It's meant to rattle us right. But remember, Shimoda, he reveals it later, the vampire. All in his head. A thought form. A way to make a point. And that point hits hard. We are responsible for our experiences. Even the scary ones. What you fear you give power to. Okay, that's both empowering and terrifying. Okay. Like, I can create amazing things, but I'm also responsible for the monsters under the bed. It's about owning your power, right? Yeah. You can focus on the shadows, or you can choose to shine a light. And that choice, that responsibility, it's never more intense than during that radio show Shimoda does. It's like he's dropping truth bombs left and right. The illusion of good and evil, the idea that we choose everything, even suffering. He was not holding back. He knew he was shaking things up, challenging everything people thought they knew, and it all leads to that tragic ending. His death, shot, gone. Which, come on, how do you square that? He knew so much, understood reality on this whole other level. Yeah. Why not just, you know, dodge the bullet? That's the paradox at the heart of illusions, right? Shimoda keeps saying, we're more than these bodies. Death. Maybe it's not an ending, just a transition, a shift in perspective. Like he was teaching us till the very end. Even death. Just another experience we can learn from. And the image he leaves us with, so powerful. The world, it's our exercise book. You get to choose what you write in it. So what will you write in yours? That's the question Illusions throws at us. It's an invitation to, like, step into the driver's seat, but for real this time. To write your own story, make it epic. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder the possibilities. Until next time, keep exploring.